All right, uh, so next up, we have Michael Toriyama from Northwestern University, studies computational material science under Jeffrey Snyder. And he, he did his practicum also in 2021 at the National Renewable Energy Laboratory at NREL. Uh, so we're going to take a quick de detour from uh, climate science, biology, and we're going to go into uh, material science in this talk today. So hello everyone, my name is Michael Toriyama. Uh, I work with Jeff Snyder at Northwestern University and Freshman Gorai at the Colorado School of Mines. And uh, ooh, I, I hear the amplification now. Uh, I, and today I'm going to be talking about the prospect of using a class of materials called topological insulators, which are conductive on the surface but insulating inside of the surface as potential thermoelectric materials, which can convert between thermal energy and electrical energy very efficiently. So let's get started. And I want to get uh, this discussion started by motivating this topic. But, and we're going to do that by looking at a breakdown of the energy consumption in the United States of America uh, by various economic sectors. We see that, about, that by some measures, about 60% of the total energy consumption in the U.S. is due to industry and transportation, but a significant portion of the pie is taken up by buildings, both residential and commercial. Now, so that, that may not come as a surprise to many of you, given that you know, millions of Americans live in the U.S., but what may come as a surprise is that, a, is that a substantial amount of energy taken up by buildings is actually due to heating and cooling-based appliances. So this includes space heaters, uh, refrigerators, air conditioners. And as you can see from the sub-breakdown, more than 20% of the total energy consumption in the U.S. is taken up by heating and cooling-based appliances or conventional thermal management systems, 20%. So that's a very substantial amount, and because of that, we need to look for very efficient uh, thermal management systems uh, to address the ever-growing energy demand from these types of systems, which, by the way, is expected to grow uh, by almost three times com uh, by the end of 2050 compared to 2016. Now, that may not be even the scariest part about this. What may be even scarier is the constricting effects that conventional uh, thermal management systems have on the environment due to their usage of chemical agents and refrigerants. So as you can see from this diagram on the right here, uh, this, is a, this is a projection of carbon-based emissions from conventional thermal management systems alone. And you can see that there's almost a doubling of carbon-based emissions from 2016 all the way to 2050. And by some other measures, this has been predicted to be up to 30%, 40% even. And so now we have this two-headed monster that we need to address uh, uh, due to uh, conventional thermal management systems, the ever-growing energy demand and the growing uh, carbon-based emissions. But luckily for us, just like how there's a Batman for every uh, Harley Quinn and Joker, or you know, how there's a Luke Skywalker for every Darth Vader and the Emperor, we have thermoelectric devices that can address both of these uh, concerns simultaneously. So let me explain what thermo thermoelectric devices are and what they can do. Uh, so thermoelectric devices, as the name implies, can convert between thermal energy and electrical energy. So what you could do is you can flow heat through this material and get an electrical current out of it, or more relevant to our problem at hand, you can run el an electrical current through the device and make one side intentionally hot and the other side intentionally cold. So essentially, we can use a thermoelectric device as a heater or as a cooler. And this uh, type of device uses no chemical agents that are, that are harmful to the environment. And if we can get the efficiencies, to be high, efficiencies of these devices to be high enough, thermoelectric devices can become an important workhorse in reducing both the energy demand and carbon-based emissions from co uh, conventional thermal ma uh, compared to conventional thermal management systems. But that's a big if if we can get the efficiencies of these types of devices to be large enough. Because the reality of the situation, unfortunately, is that thermoelectric materials just aren't, um, are just not yet competitive with conventional thermal management systems in terms of their efficiency. And much of the problem actually originates from the material itself that's used in these, devi oh, that's used in these devices because the, the material properties that must be simultaneously optimized to obtain high thermoelectric performance are often conflicting with one another. So if you optimize one of the properties, you might, uh, it might lead to a decrease in some other properties that you also want to be optimized. And so the community, the thermoelectrics community, is still in a constant search for new design strategies or even new materials for uh, next generation uh, heating, heating and cooling-based appliances. 
And so in, in terms of discovering new thermoelectric materials, what we like to do is we like to take a step back and look at the characteristics of known thermoelectrics. So here's essentially a zoo of a whole of thermoelectric materials that we know are really good for us. And at the temperature that's relevant to our application today, i.e. room temperature or 300K, there's one material that really stands out, bismuth telluride. Now what's interesting about bismuth telluride is that it's not just a good thermoelectric material, but it's also a topological insulator. And what we need to know about a topological insulator is that for, for this talk is that it's a type of material that has an inverted electronic structure. So let me explain what I mean by that. All materials can be characterized by something called an electronic structure, just generally speaking. And the electronic structure gives rise to various electronic properties of the material. So for example, how conductive the material is or how insulating the material is, or even what kind, what colors it, the colors uh, the material might emit. In a normal insulator, such as sodium chloride, there is something called a conduction band all the way up top and a valence band all the way on the bottom. And in a normal insulator, you can typically attribute the conduction bands and the valence bands to one or more atomic constituents in the material. So in table salt, sodium chloride, the conduction bands are usually derived from sodium and the valence bands are usually derived from chlorine. In a topological insulator, however, we have this inversion of, of atomic character at some points in the electronic structure, leading to a phenomenon, as you guessed it, called band inversion. And it's a hallmark of all topological insulators. All topological insulators exhibit this phenomenon called band inversion. And in a real topological insulator material, like bismuth telluride, for example, band inversion manifests itself in the, in the electronic structure like this, where you can see that all the bands on the bottom there are mostly tellurium derived except it has a little bit of spring uh, a little bit of bismuth character associated with it and vice versa for the conduction band What's interesting about bismuth telluride, however, is that the bands that are inverted in atomic orbital character are, the band, are bands that have this undulating sort of highly non-parabolic form that we're going to refer to as warping in this talk so it's been speculated that band inversion is somehow related to war this warping effect and the, this, warp, uh, this warped band electronic structure of bismuth telluride is what gives rise to the high thermoelectric performance of this one particular material. But it's all speculations up to this point, how band inversion is somehow related to warping effects in the electronic structure and how the warping effects in the electronic structure somehow leads to higher thermoelectric performance in bismuth telluride. But our speculations really inspire a, a very general hypothesis that we can pose for ourselves which is that topological insulators in general, beyond just bismuth telluride, are going to be good thermoelectric materials because all topological insulators uh, have band inversion, are characterized by band inversion, and that band inversion leads to warping effects that leads to high, high thermoelectric performance. So this is, the, uh, and in the interest of discovering, designing, and developing new thermoelectric materials for next generation heating and cooling, uh, cooling based appliances, uh, our current project aims to confirm this hypothesis. So to test our hypothesis, we can ask ourselves three key scientific questions that we're going to be addressing in this talk. The first of them being, does warping occur in the electronic structure of a topological insulator due to band inversion in the topological insulator? And if so, when? In other words, are there underlying conditions, physical conditions that need to be satisfied for band inversion in a topological insulator to lead to warping effects in the electronic structure, fundamentally speaking? Number two, we, we ask ourselves whether topological insulators are fundamentally linked to high thermoelectric performance due to warping effects. And lastly, looking forward, once we can answer, oh, sorry, once we answer these first two questions, looking forward, we ask ourselves what, how, what sort of strategies can we take to discover new thermoelectric materials for next generation heating and cooling based appliances to replace conventional thermal management systems. So let's begin. So uh, to answer these questions, we first turn to electronic structure theory. And basically what we're doing is we're solving a simpler form of the Schrodinger equation. So using a combination of perturbation theory and symmetry-based principles, uh, we can derive an analytical expression of relationship between band inversion and warping effects in the electronic structure. So the theoretical results are shown on the left there, but I want to explain our results uh, pictorially on the right. Essentially, our results boil down to the fact that 
the warping effect in the, ele in the electronic structure of a topological insulator is dependent on one key characteristic of topological insulators. And that one key characteristic is something called the band invergence strength, where you can see that as the band invergence strength gets stronger and stronger, as some critical uh, band invergence strength, the bands become warped as, as opposed to staying parabolic. And that's actually what the warping criterion on the bottom there represents in a physical sense. OK, so we have this band invergence strength on the denominator there. Denominator there. As the band invergence strength gets uh, stronger and stronger, as some critical invergence strength, this, uh, this inequality is satisfied, leading to warping. So, so it leads to a switching behavior between a warp band and a parabolic band. And so, you know, there are some other, uh, some other interactions at play here that affects this, this phenomenon, such as perturbated band-to-band -band interactions or spin-orbit effects that are, that are um, captured by the other variables in that warping criterion. But nonetheless, our theoretical, from our theoretical results, we can generalize two main rules that we need to satisfy in order to get warp bands due to band inversion in a topological insulator. First of them being that the material must be a topological insulator to begin with. Now, that was kind of alluded to already, but this is a necessary condition uh, that needs to be satisfied, but it's not yet a sufficient condition. The sufficiency comes from the fact that the bands themselves must be sufficiently inverted. And so now we've established from a theoretical standpoint uh, a relationship between band inversion and warping effects uh, that are tied together by, some, by a key property of topological insulators that's known as a band inversion strength. But we haven't yet talked about whether topological insulators are good for thermoelectric performance just yet. We've only talked about a key characteristic of topological insulators, band inversion, that leads to warping effects in the electronic structure. So in order to scrutinize that, what we do is we run a whole bunch of density functional theory-based calculations, and we, do, and we calculate the, the thermoelectric transport properties using a Boltzmann transport-based formalism. And what, and what we do is we sample a whole bunch of materials, both normal insulators on the blue side, on the right side, and topological insulators on the red side, on the, on the left side over there. And you can see that there's almost a phase diagram-like separation in the thermoelectric performances between topological insulators and normal insulators where topological insulators tend to exhibit higher thermoelectric performances than normal insulators, hence indicating that topological insulators are probably better for thermoelectric perform uh, for thermoelectrics than normal insulators. Now, this is an incredibly exciting, um, exciting result. But we wanted to uh, scrutinize this even more and make sure that it wasn't a mistake. And what we do is we uh, supplement our DFT calculations, our density functional theory calculations, with a transport model that we can develop using Boltzmann transport theory and perturbation theory. And so by developing such a model, we can capture the exact trend that we see uh, from our DFT calculations. So now we're marrying, essentially, DFT computational uh, results with theoretical results here. And not only that, so, so our theoretical results show us that topological insulators are, again, expected to perform better than normal insulators. But not only, the, not only that, our model really reveals, uh, from a theoretical standpoint, that the band inversion strength is a key uh, characteristic of a topological insulator that governs the thermoelectric performance of a topological insulator, where you can see that as the band inversion gets stronger and stronger, going from uh, right to left in the plot, the thermoelectric performance essentially shoots up uh, once you get into the topological insulator regime. And so from both our DFT calculations and our, uh, and our perturbation theory-based model, we can conclude that topological insulators are predicted to be good, uh, thermo, uh, good, good thermoelectric materials and that topological insulators are expected to outperform normal insulators for, in terms of their thermoelectric performance. So this is great. But what we still haven't done is we haven't posed, we haven't uh, suggested any particular material for experimentalists to, te to test out. So we have all the DFT calculations what we can do is we can check out all the materials that have the highest thermoelectric performances, evaluate their stabilities just to make sure that they can be synthesized in a lab. And what we arrive at is one particular material, sodium calcium bismuthide. We predict that this material, um, in, term, in terms of its thermoelectric performance, is comparable to state-of-the-art thermoelectric materials, such as bismuth telluride or magnesium antimonide. This material is, has inverted bands, meaning that it's a topological insulator, and there have been other studies on this material, not in, not in the context of thermoelectrics, but, it, but have verified that this material is indeed a topological insulator, so we're good with that. So, uh, so in the end, what we've done is we've not only identified sodium calcium bismuthide as a potentially high-performing thermoelectric material, but we've done so by considering a topological characteristic of sodium uh, of this uh, of 
the, uh, of the large set of materials that, that we've considered in the previous slide. And so in the end, I hope I've con convinced you that we've answered all three scientific questions that we wanted to answer. First of them being whether warping and band inversion are somehow fundamentally related to one another. And yes, they are, provide, and the link between them is the band inversion strength in topological insulators. Secondly, uh, um, We've shown that the thermoelectric performances of topological insulators are, are expected to outperform those of normal insulators. And lastly, we've uh, suggested a materi uh, particular material, sodium calcium bismuthide, for experimentalists to, che to check out in the lab. And so with that, I would like to thank you all for listening. Uh, this is the group that, that I've been working with at Northwestern and uh, Prashun Garai, who's a professor and my other co-advisor at the Colorado School of Mines. Uh, the thing that I want to know about this group is that it's mostly experimental people. Uh, so it, as you can see, I'm not in this picture, by the way, but as you can see, not, not because I, I was like excluded from the, this group picture, I just, I just wasn't there to, to, in the picture. But anyway, uh, so you can see that the group composition is very, uh, very much heavily weighted towards experimentalists. And take me as an example of someone who, you know, as, as a computational researcher can still join a predominantly experimental lab and find a lot of success. Uh, so just check out my Google Scholar, uh, Google Scholar page if you guys want uh, more proof. But uh, take me as an example of someone who can, uh, as, you know, uh, you know, you, you guys can all succeed essentially in an experimental lab is all I'm saying. So yeah, thank you all for listening and I would like to take any questions.